So our job then is basically to analyze this problem in two phases. This first phase that goes up until some mysterious time t and then at which point the rabbit hits a certain position and then the remaining part of his motion. So let's look at uh, let's call give these two phases names. This is here is phase one. This over here is phase two. And in phase one, let's see what we know. We know the, um, as we had said, the initial position is zero. The initial velocity is zero. And the acceleration is the acceleration of the hair, 20 meters per second squared. Now, during this interval one, we also know what the final velocity within that interval is going to be. So the final velocity is going to be 20 meters per second. And um, one thing that we would really like to know uh, <coughs> as we analyze the motion in, uh, in, in phase two is how far did the hair get during phase one? So we'd like to know the final velocity and the final position from phase one because those then will tell us in phase two the initial velocity of phase two will be the final velocity from phase one and the initial position for phase two will be the uh, initial um, the final position from phase one and uh, the acceleration in phase two we happen to know is zero. So now the uh, key piece of information, oh, and I should say we also want to know what the uh, time interval involved in one is. Because we would like to know how long he's in that accelerating phase so that we can then add to that amount of time how long it takes for him to cover the rest of the football field to find his final time. So these are the two separate problems that we have to try to solve. So let's focus here on phase one and um, see what we uh, what we know here. So to get the uh, <coughs> the time involved, um, time occurs in two uh, basic formulas for constant acceleration. One of those basic formulas relates the velocities. That's the simpler one, and that's often the one that that um, you want to try first. So let's just remind ourselves of the three special formulas. You have the final velocity is the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. And in this case, that's going to allow us to determine the time because if you look at it, we know the final velocity, we know the initial velocity, we know the acceleration, so there's only one known in this one equation. We can solve that for the unknown t. So that's the approach we're going to take to find the time t. Now for the position, interestingly enough, there are uh, two ways you can go about that. There is a formula we had uh, mentioned previously that the final position is equal to the initial position plus the initial velocity times the time uh, plus one half the acceleration times the time squared. And once we know the time from using this first equation, we could substitute that in and knowing all of the initial positions, velocity, and acceleration, we could find the final position. The third form that is commonly used, which uh, I believe we can also use in this case, relates not um, final positions and times, doesn't relate positions and times, but it relates velocities and positions without reference to time. And that's often very useful if you want to skip the step of having to solve for the time. That one reads that the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared <coughs> <coughs> plus twice the acceleration times the change in the position. Now in this case, we know the final velocity, we know the initial velocity, and we know the acceleration. 
So this equation would have only one unknown in it, the uh, distance covered. So we could use that equation if we wanted to find x final. OK, so I suppose we should go ahead then and uh, solve these. So the time, as I said, I wanted to get from this equation. Um, and we can do a little bit of the algebra here in our head. Notice if I was trying to solve for this time t, if I subtract vi from both sides of the equation, on this side over here, I'll get v final minus v initial equals a times t. So if I want to get t, I just then divide that by a. So this should be v final minus v initial divided by the acceleration. And v final minus v initial, you'll notice, is 20 meters per second because v initial was 0. The acceleration was 20 meters per second, but if you're careful with the units, you'll know it's 20 meters per second squared. And that all works out very nicely because then the meters cancel. Uh, one of the seconds cancels. I get 1 over 1 over seconds, which is just seconds. And 20 over 20 is 1. So the time was just 1 second for the rabbit to reach its full speed. <clears throat> Good. Now then, if I substitute that into um, this relation, so I can, I can now solve for delta x in two different ways, I suppose, if I wanted. Um, the easiest one in this case to do in my head would be this one here, the direct evaluation. If I stick t into here, notice that the initial position was 0. The initial velocity was 0. So these two terms don't contribute anything. And I get 1 half times the acceleration times the time squared. The time is 1 second. 1 second squared is 1 second squared. Uh, times acceleration would give me 20 meters. And then times a half gives me 10 